So one tip that I have is for sheet zoom. The main thing about using it neutral is the fact that there's a lot of layers to it. Now obviously the opponent can jump after they see the Shih Tzu, you can kill them, drag them down to the ground, or potentially punish them for doing it. Anyways, get a long string or get a punish. Uh, depending on the character, if it's Sim for example, they could do Elk Hunt and go under the Shih Tzu. If you know they're going to do Elk Hunt, then you can you know, find some way to punish that out. I think spin works for that, uh, but I haven't tested it. Another aspect of the Shih Tzu too is the fact that besides just doing these things, Shih Tzu also, if the opponent doesn't want to contest it, they'll walk backwards. So this could be a good way, just th throwing out a Shih Tzu uh, in neutral could be a good way to get them to back up, give you some space. Like uh, if say if you're in the corner, it can help you get more space helping you get out of the corner a bit more, or it can help you push the opponent more to the corner or actually get them to the corner. Another thing Anji has is Fan Toss, which at lower levels, this is like really good to like abuse. So something like that can be pretty good. You can follow up with like a uh, far slash, uh, besides just that, uh, if, you're, if you're close enough, you might be able to get a 2S. So, you can follow up with a block string like that, end up getting like far slash afterwards. The fan toss is plus, obviously. Now, the good thing about fan toss is that at lower levels, it's at lower floors, it's just something that you should just straight up abuse. In fact, even in higher floors, people are just not used to fighting Anji at all. So this could be something that is very abusable, just abusing the plus frames after that, getting far slash, you know, getting chip damage on them by constantly looping the uh, plus frames, you know. Making the risk gauge increase more and more. Might be able to just increase that risk versus reward, like for when you do that overhead to where it's like a bit better for you. Like you might be able to get a counter hit instead of just like a normal hit after making that risk go up so high and, that, and then that counter hit can lead to a counter hit combo. People don't know that the explosion is the only part that's the hitbox. And one good thing about fan toss is that comparing these, these block strings together, the low, right? People get used to the low. People know that when the low happens, that's the end of your turn. But, um, and then they'll try to contest you, right? But people, who aren't experienced against Anji don't know that they need to actually start to punish fan toss because if they don't then Anji has the potential to just keep moving pressure constantly so they're going to need to like start jumping forward and actually punishing you uh, but the thing is though is that in order to escape this pressure a lot of players will actually just start jump guarding back and if they're like in center stage center screen that means they're probably not going to get a punish on you like whatsoever a lot of the time which is really good now obviously if the character has a DP, they might get used to it, they might try to DP if they know they can. But yeah, yeah, it's good. Because of the sheer fact that the opponent just jump guards away and does nothing to you at lower levels, that's way better. It, if you know the opponent's just gonna be like that, instead of just ending on a low and ending your turn right there, putting yourself in a position to where you can get a block string just done and dealt to you where it's their turn, yeah, it's better to end just on fan toss because fan toss won't get you punished like the low will. And then you can play, play a little game with them instead. So if they're going to jump constantly every single time they, you do fan toss, that's when you can start doing true string low. And then if you know that they're not going to jump, then you can just go into the fan toss. It's very good just to do, it, it's better to do that from a conservative standpoint as compared to per se doing overheads and lows because then that just causes problems where you might, they might block the overhead and then you're just gonna get punished. Also another thing that I've noticed too, uh, you might wanna lap block strings or some block strings, but do you see how far this string Press the opponent made them go. Now some people might just be mashing DP, depending, like depending on the player they might. Doing something like this, well, doing that block string into Shih Tzu, I feel like it's a nice little OS to where like, 
If they DP, they are going to get just punished, or they might get punished. They might get smacked by the Shih Tzu, they might not. But regardless, you're safe. Their DP is not going to land on you. Or if they keep blocking, then the Shih Tzu will potentially just keep on, you know, going. It'll end up getting blocked, and then you can reset your pressure. Of course, now if the opponent knows you're going to do a Shih Tzu thing right there, then they might start to mash. But if they start to mash, then you can just frame trap right here with like a Fujin and punish them. Another aspect I want to talk about with Anji is meter. What I think might be good with his meter, personally, in my opinion, like, so there's already a video on this. That there's already stuff like that. Uh, if I could find the video, I'll see if I might end up just uh, putting that in the links in the description. Something I like to do with meter is that I like to go into the overhead and then RC. If the opponent blocks, then I'm going to be safe and I can reset my pressure off the overhead. And if it's and if it hits, then I get a full on combo off of it. That's the OS off the overhead. And obviously the overhead can pretty much get you punished. It can really hurt get you hurt, you know, because it's very it's got like a long recovery to it. I mean I you can get pop bustered by Temkin if you, in that matchup, so it's good to save meter for that. And you can basically do the same thing with the low, just going in straight up into an RC to continue pressure. I personally think it's a good idea to use meter in these situations because, you know, some matchups you might want to stay, you might just want to stay on top of the opponent, you know. Like if you're fighting an axle, you're going to want to stay on top of the opponent. You don't want him to escape to neutral, potentially, and start zoning you. That's also just kind of like my play style too, just keeping the opponent constantly in you know, a block string situation to where I can open them up. You know, that's my personal recommendation for meter. Just using it for different stuff like that. You know, the universal dust stuff there. Then there's like, then there's like the other thing to dust into PRC low. Well, actually, I think it's a bit better if you do that. It's a bit faster. Also, another thing I'd recommend for Anji 2 is to just try to get your try to get your close slash hits in on Oki, which I mean I guess that's universal right here, right? Like say they're on wake up, right? I'm not gonna talk about Shih Tzu here, but like, say they are on wake up, right? I recommend making sure to get the close slash hits in if you can get used to that because then you've got more layers of Yomi you can do like for example off of this I can throw again off of this I can close slash then throw because it's plus off of this I can do Fujin mix You can go into Shih Tzu anyways, if you space it out right. I don't know if that was spaced out properly, and maybe that could have been done off the heavy, heavy slash after that, but you know. It's just more layering, layering right? More stuff they need to think about. And the more, and the more layers you can get in there, the more unpredictable it becomes. It's just, it's best if you have as many options available to you as possible, because the more chances you have at mixing up the opponent, the harder it is for them to actually deal with it. You know, to mixing them up, to open them up, or just doing it to reset pressure, you know. Okay, so another thing for Anji is his empty fusion into Phantos. Now, one of the reasons why you'd want to do this is because certain block strings, like this, for example, when you do the normal Phantos, 
far slash is one of the few buttons that can reach that far and if you try to do a strike throw situation from that distance I've had a lot of players seem to be able to react to me running in and just punish me for it. So depending on the block string you do, you might be able to get something better than just Fusion, Phantos, and uh, Far Slash. Like for example, off of this, you're able to get that. You're able to get a Close Slash, which will allow for more Yomi. Anyways, like I could run up and throw you from there, or I can do Close Slash into a normal block string again and frame trap you. Or, of course, I can also just tick throw. So there's more things that they'll have to think in their mind, in their head, about what they have to do. It's harder to react to, like when you do empty fan toss this way. But yeah, the ability to be able to do that is pretty good because it makes them makes the opponent have to guess more. They have more places where they have to guess to uh, where they have to guess right, and if they guess wrong, they're going to you know get hit, right? But uh, that's all I've got for this one. See ya, gringos.